Uh, that brings me to another question. Weren't you there recently? What? On Gold Street? Yes. Oh, yeah, I believe we were there with the press. We were there with a the film camera. I think we were taking some long shots down the road there. Yeah, I believe, uh, what do some people refer to my UP Bull? Uh, I think that's a reference to a Union Pacific private, private security. Yes, I heard that they abducted two people from the side of the road because they were there and the uranium material. Yes, they had a camera. Yes, they had a film crew. Yes, they were making a film and, mid and videos. Yes, but why were they abducted? Why were they taken? Why was it not in the paper? Why was it hush-hush? Why did they not listen to the person saying, I've been contaminated. What are you going to do about it? You said I, it wasn't in the paper. No, of course not. But they normally print normal arrests and stuff like that in the paper. Well, yes? of course, but we're talking the Union Pacific here. Union Pacific Railroad. I mean, they have a lot of attorneys. They're a big corporation. They have a lot of money. In fact, the, U the Pocatello police even showed up. And they kind of shoot them away. They will handle this. We're taking care of this. Were you actually on the railroad property? Of course not. We're on the public right-of-way of a state highway. And yet he still abducted you. What can you do? They turn around, they just say, what are you doing here? You tell them. They say, well, we want, want to see what you got in your pack. Turn around, put your hands around. For you know it, the cuffs are on you. Then they tell you, we're arresting you. For what? For trespassing on the city street? Apparently so. Take away, put it in your in the vehicle, take you off to UP never seen again land. So were they ever heard of again? Ah, uh, eventually. Even though there was issues of trying to deal with the contamination, trying to share with them who the authorities they were to notify, to try to share, to get a phone call even, to be able to call out, to tell anyone, for people wearing who knew that they were abducted, trying to get access to them or contact being denied day after day. Yes. I, uh, I can recall one of them tried getting a hold of the, one of the people that was abducted, and they said that there was no visitations, even at the jail cell. Well, all as I can say for that, as I know, is they put that person in solitary confinement, restricting them from all inmates as well. They did not want that person sharing or having access to informing any of the agencies, like the Center for Disease Control, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the Idaho Engineering Laboratory, the EPA, the Idaho, what is it, the Idaho IDEQ, Idaho Department of Environmental Quality of the Health Department. No access whatsoever to get proper protocol to how to deal with it. No, instead they choose to let just more uranium in its dust form possibly track through the drill, exposing more people. So, oh, what can we do about it? What can anybody do about it? You can call your city council people. You can call the mayor. You can call your commissioners. There's three of them, you know. They are all aware of these issues. They are all aware of the material in this community. They just need a little help from you. Remember, they work for you. You just need to ask them to get the money to clean it up. To get the money to remove it properly and safely. Or just not to say that it does not exist here. Not to say that it's only out at that mountain of uranium outside of town. That's been sitting there for 12 years after the Don plant closed. Still arguing and debating how can we tell the community? How can we how can it, how can we as FMC leave this community with our hundreds of billions of dollars and give them a drop in a bucket of money for putting a foot of cover dirt over it? And not even in any way or form dealing with the city of Pocatello and its cost and burden of trying to deal with this on their own.
or Bannock County. And the railroad, are they a conspirator? Are they a player? My goodness, what do you think? They used as ballast on the train in this whole region. When those cars dumped their uranium ore, there were billowing clouds of radioactive material flowing in the wind into the communities in Pocatello. And it's still there. Yes, they had to stop using it, but it's still there. It's on all the tracks. And it's also on a lot of the properties. You said that there's money out there to clean it up? Where's the money come from? Well, we have a Superfund site. For those who don't understand what a Superfund site is, it means that's a law that was passed for the EPA to oversee to be able to request from a corporation for monies for cleanup and or medical compensation. We now have in place the Radiation Compensation Act of 1990. People have paid, paid out billions of dollars in compensation for their exposure by government and industry for exposure to these materials. There are people who are still getting paid off in Pocatello for it. There are more in the INEL and others around. The only one who is trying to skip out, the main one in the contamination of our area here, our community, our beloved, beautiful Pocatello, is the FMC Corporation. Makers of weapons around the world, part of the BAE, one of the largest military contractors in the world. They're, they will not part with their pile of uranium out there because it is worth billions of dollars. They just want to cover it up so they can sneak it away and sell it. Sell it for what it is. Rich and heavy metals already processed down to elemental form. Easy to remove as it was almost as easy to remove the phosphorus that was in it. You just melt it down and tap it off. Some people tried on their own back before they wanted anybody. You know, there was a famous book called the Cyanide Canary, about the story of Alan Elias, little capitalist greedy person who worked and met with FMC Corporation and set up a plant right across the street. His intent? To recover the heavy metals, to recover uranium, to make a profit. FMC, well, if anything goes wrong, they're the scapegoat. Did things go wrong? Oh, horribly wrong. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyways, the cyanide canary. It's named as it is because of what it is. The Alan Elias Company hid, buried tons of the powdered material around Bannock County. Dumped it in who knows all the places. Contaminating Power County. Contaminating the Mashad Flats area. Contaminating places that we're still looking for. But the two EPA people who worked on that case, when they finally were able to retire, said this book has, this story has to be told. So in 2001, that book was written and published. And I'll tell you this, it's a famous book outside of Eastern Idaho. But in Eastern Idaho, you'll be lucky if you can find it at all. But the Pocatello Library now has one copy. One copy, you said? One copy of the Cyanide Canary. I've never heard of it prior. How can you, if you live here? Talk about the power of censorism. Hundreds of billions of dollars of profit can pretty much buy off anything. So right now we're buying off a tribe and now we're going to sneak out and without ever buying because we can't, they don't want to afford to buy off a whole city. That would be unprecedented. So all I can say is, hey, give Aaron Brockovich a call. Just go on her website and say, hey, help, Aaron. The Idaho Lorax has been abducted twice. Or attempts to first time lost, second time abducted. As we say, the Lorax was lifted. The lifted Lorax. But some say he is back. How did he get back? 
Shouldn't have been left in the first place. Shouldn't have been able to be abducted in the first place. Well, obviously, some say that maybe he went to the loony bin. But if that was the case, then that would be the first nut that ever got let out of a nut house without even a hearing. Just get him the hell out of here. They're coming to take me away, ho, 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 to the funny farm where life is beautiful with colors and truffle trees and parbalutes and swami swans. Of course, if it wasn't for the swami swans checking in on the Lorax, maybe he'd still be hidden away. But, no, I heard the Lorax is free for now. He's only as free as long as you go and help our community. Help the health and safety of our community. Clean up the material in this community. You mentioned that they uh, were buying off the tribe. Uh, as I say with many people, the tribe is the tribe. They're a separate nation. They will make their own deals, but don't ever think they're here to help us. This is our community. We have to help ourselves. And so it is very important that you call your commissioners, that you call your city council people, that you get involved, that you request the documentation that they have. There are aerial photographs, aerial detailed flyovers by with a Messerschmitt helicopter of all where the uranium is in this town. They just flew over and mapped it and grid it and know where everywhere it is. And is it still here? Sorry to say, but yes it is. Much in all the same places as it was back in 1987. The document is called the Radio Aerial Radiological Survey of Pocatello, Soda Springs, and Fort Hall. Dated 1987, the contractors that flew over and did the study was EG&G, which was then the contractors for the INEL. So where are we today? We're behind where we were 20 years ago because at least they got it stopped and they recognized it. There just wasn't any money. Now we have a possibility for $10 billion or more and we're maybe letting it go. I have to thank people like some people in the tribe for trying to get the radiological study headline in the Blackfoot Morning News. FMC material to be studied for health effects. Headline news. I asked you, Idaho State Journal, nothing. Do they know about it? Of course they do. Is it mentioned in the paper? No, they still say, well, we might have a little radon leaking. Well, where the hell the radons come from? Anybody should take their chemistry, they know that radon comes from uranium. You gotta have a lot of uranium to have a lot of radon. There's a lot more than anybody talks about. In fact, there's more material here spread in Pocatello than there was in Chernobyl, Russia. And it's going to be here a long time. Nobody's trying to kill you quickly. It just kills you slowly with cancer. Because radiation and the uranium and its starter products, they don't, they're not a symptom of cancer. They're not a precursor to cancer. They are not a complication or may cause cancer. They are the cause of many cancers. They are what makes a cancer. They're a bombarding alpha, beta, gamma radiation point source within your body from these small particles you've ingested, killing you. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the next day. If not your grandparents, your parents. If not you as a child, you soon. It's a dark picture indeed. It's a darker picture if you do nothing about it. Talk to everybody. Ask for the $10 billion or more. Contact the Radiation Compensation Act from the federal government. The military was involved. It's still involved. It's still the largest source of uranium materials right. in our country of uranium materials right. in our country. It's about time. 
You guys have a wonderful day. Contact your uh, your city officials and goodbye.